What's happening? <laughs> That's a whopper. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> oh, this boat is getting thrown around. Now our engine isn't starting. Pillows are really comfy too. After a couple of weeks calling this beautiful village home, it was time to set sail as we were keen to continue exploring hey, further afield. Thank you, bro. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. I love your family, bro. So friendly. Let's do it, mate. All right, we're out of here. Terima kasih, Bapak. Ibu. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. This actually feels like home after a week. You're sad to be leaving? I feel bad taking you away from your family. <laughs> no, that's fine. <laughs> Alright bro, we'll see you in there. Let's do it. Yeah. All right, the boys are now in there and you can see this current is racing this direction and it hits the wind on the other side and the wind into current create like the ocean to stand up and be really rough. But generally big currents is equal to big fish. So fingers crossed they can get in the right spot and hopefully land something tasty for dinner. Been in the water for probably 15 seconds. I just heard Hans's gun go off. He's got a fish. Well done, bro. Well done. Nice fish. <laughs> Mackerel. Yeah, the boys have landed right on the hot spot. So we're going over to see what they've got. I think it was a, a big mackerel from the uh, from what I heard. Any mackerel would do. Beautiful eating. Oh man, that was first dive. <laughs> Nice one. <laughs> nice fish. Oh, good. Well done, bro. <laughs> Beautiful eating size Spanish mackerel. A midnight snapper, one of my favorite to hunt. We don't get many of them at home. I'll put this one straight to sleep. All right, so we've just come right back up to the top of the reef here. The boys drifted probably a couple of kilometers there in maybe 20 minutes. They were really, really moving at a rate of knots. Apparently they're just having to sort of swim down close to the bottom and almost doing like a drive-by as the current just rips them along the edge. But I've just dropped them back in here. They're going to do another big drift and see how they go. They reckon the fish life is pretty impressive in there. So that's good news anyway. Oh man, I think it's one of those days where it's a hell of a lot nicer under the water than uh, above the water. It's, the sea's quite sloppy here. It's not too much fun on board at the moment, to be honest. I hope the boys are getting some fish. Oh, far out. Oh, this boat is getting thrown around. Oh, bro. That was so yeah. sick. Yeah, that was fun, man. <laughs> We've navigated our way out of Choppy Channel there. We were getting thrown around like a rag doll. We've come into the leeward side of this island behind me, and it's absolutely pristine. It's protected from the wind. It's glassy calm. You can feel the wind blowing over the top of this canopy here behind me. And there's all these little secluded white sandy beaches, a few limestone casts and headlands that come out. 
and an established coconut plantation, which leads me to believe there's, there's villages not too far away. Uh, the boys have jumped in for a spear here to see if we can get a couple more fish because the one of our intentions is today is Hans has got some family in a neighboring island's village and he said we'd be able to go get some fresh produce there, maybe some limes for cooking for the next couple of days. Yeah, when the boys get back in, we're gonna find a little beach that we can get our, which we can nose the boat into and cook up some fish and some rice for lunch. Hans has got a fish. Mate, right, you're on fire. You're getting some really nice fish. Ah! Yeah, these don't get a hell of a lot too much bigger, but really nice white flesh, black spot. Moses perch. We're gonna have to unload a bit of fish to the village at this stage, or at least go in and do a bit of a trade for some produce. Oh, jeez. How was it, mate? Oh, really nice, mate. Really nice. The highlight was a big coronation trout. I was sure I was going to get it, but he just slipped into a cave like that small and just disappeared. And I spent pretty much the rest of the dive looking for it. <laughs> Unbelievable. There you go. That's from the, the drift Hans and I did just before Midnight Snapper. A nice mackerel. Yes. <laughs> What's your favorite, bro? Uh, mackerel. Mackerel? <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, this one's my favorite. That works out well. <laughs> Have we got the colors through the head? Sounds good. Beautiful. Lunch and dinner. Wow, <laughs> whoa, heavy. <laughs> <laughs> Seems there's never a dull moment here. Now our engine isn't starting, so. This won't go. It goes into forward, but that's meant to be neutral. And it's not starting, but it's like it's staying in gear. It won't come back into reverse either. So basically we're broken down here. The boys are up getting a bit of a barbecue going for a cook up. I'm gonna try fix this engine. We've just pulled into one of the many gorgeous beaches here. Front, back anchor. Gonna get a fire going because there's a fair bit of hunger building up in the camp, so let's drop some lunch. Yeah. Exactly. Hans is just using the back of the machete to take all the scales off either side, and we'll take the guts out. We'll go straight on those coconut palm frond stalks. We're going to slow grill it over the coals. So we're just building up a coal base now with all of the, the dry wood that we snapped off these overhanging dead trees. And then Hans has gone and cut some, yeah, the hard stalk of the palm frond. Because this is green and sappy, it's not going to burn straight through. If this was dry, it'd be no good. The fish would be sitting there and crack all the way through and hit the sand. So you know, we'll give it a couple of minutes and we'll get the fish on here. This one is stuck in forward. Strick could get it on by manually starting it, but yeah, she's not going in neutral to start, which is an issue. This is angled forward when it's in forward, going mm -hmm. forward. Yep. And then when it goes to neutral, it'll sit like this, mm -hmm. and then reverse will sit like this. Yep. So can you have a look at what happens here when I put it sure. back to neutral? Yep. Forward, yep, click straight up as okay. expected. That's forward, forward that's neutral. Reverse. Oh, that's reverse? That's right. Neutral, reverse. Yep. And now look at the other one. So this is that's it forward. I'm trying to come back to neutral. And it won't. That feels like neutral. No oh, man. Oh, there's the problem under the throttle. Unfortunately, it's not a loose thing. It is snapped. That's broken. That's why we can't get it in and out of gear. Oh, because that was bent. Looks like we're on one motor and we're a hell of a long way from home here. This is just not ideal. There's been a few developments up here in the kitchen while Strick and I are trying to fix the, the port side outboard. Got some cooking bananas directly. And there's the snapper. There's a lot of different varieties of banana, not just the ones that you get fresh and you have on your cereal in the morning. There's ones that you, know, you generally cook savory, similar to that of a sweet potato. You can just put them on the on the coals, you can bake them, you can do them in a curry and boil them up. Um, here in the islands, quite often, they're done like this, on the fire. 
We fortunately have a bit of breeze today, so Hans is using these palm fronds here to block the breeze. Mmm. I'll have to admit there's not a hell of a lot of flavour, but got some energy in it. And next time, definitely get a bit of salt and pepper. Pretty good to dip in the ocean actually for salt. This is my favourite here. Oh. Hans was right, that coconut meat plus the the charcoal banana is really tasty. Brings it to life, which makes sense because a lot of the times when you curry them, you'll do it with coconut cream and Naksakali. Really good, bro. Mm -hmm. That's the combo. That's the strap. Um, this dried coconut husk is really good for coals. It's also a natural mosquito repellent. We just move the fish a little bit lower as the heat's dying down, just to finish it off. And then it goes on the bench. I'm hungry, bro. You hungry? Yeah. Always. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we got good news and we got some not so good news. The good news is lunch is almost done. We're hungry and it looks amazing. The bad news is, is that we're confident that our port hand motor is broken and beyond the capability and the tools that we have of us fixing. So fortunately, on the plus side, we do have two motors. The benefit of having double outboards is if something like this happens, we can still propel ourselves forward, just significantly slower. So we're gonna have a bit of a game plan. Hans seems to think that there could be someone capable in a nearby village that might be able to, to help get this broken down motor going. By nearby, I'm talking at the speed we can go a few hours. So yeah, ideally we need to get it fixed. Okay, bro. Finishing touches. Hot. Salt. Nice and salty. Yeah, we got a grand total of zero condiments. So Hans is like, don't worry, we just put it in the ocean. That's salt. Mm. That's cool. Oh wow. That works. Man. It definitely works. Do the same for the coconut to get it nice and salty before cooking it. Dip it in the ocean. Ant camp. <laughs> Lots of ants. <laughs> I enjoy the leftovers anyway. Sort of pulling the boat apart from the front to fix things up the back here. I think this washer will do. Yeah boys, look at that. Bit of a series of unfortunate events this afternoon. We lost a washer over the side. We can't put the nut and the bolt in, so we're using rope. All right, quick update. We've opted for trying to get the outboard fixed. Uh, just given the safety factor, the distances we need to travel, how much longer we've got left to go here in West Papua. Stay tuned, we don't really know what's, what's gonna happen, but we're gonna take you guys along for the ride. As you know with our videos, we, we try not to sugarcoat stuff. We'll show you the highs, the lows, everything in between. Hey Hans, all good? <laughs> really fortunate we got a few fish in the back of the boat extra so we've just pulled into the village here we're going to hand over a few fish because they're, they're being ex extremely accommodating <laughs> and we're left with two for dinner <laughs> we give the rest away I think uh, that's as far as we're gonna get this evening. We've got the boat anchored out the front. We're gonna do a bit of a fish grill cook up. It's been a, a long afternoon, hopefully not too much of a long night. Uh, we're gonna get back into the boat maintenance tomorrow. I'll be honest with you, it's been a, a pretty long and frustrating morning. No mechanic, uh, minimal gear in the way of fixing this thing, but yeah, we, we think we've found a way to continue the journey. By shorting this, turn the motor on in gear, which is not ideal. It's um, dangerous and impractical. However, we can uh, engine with both motors. We're getting some speed, bro. Ooh. Help, Sam, they're hard.
Such an impressive fish. <laughs> oh my god. It was like 20 in that school. Oh man. <laughs> Holy moly. That's a whopper. Yeah, that's a an absolute horse, like a really good sized long nose emperor. Amazing eating and generally really, really tricky to to hunt and to to land one, so really happy with this. Oh, you're kidding! Another long nose. <laughs> That's a great fish, man. Wow, we got two long nose. All right, we decided it's it's now time to go, albeit on on one and a half engines. Uh, according to As, is very mechanical brain we've got to shorten the sensors which will then start the motor and then we'll be able to go but basically we've got to start it in gear which is not ideal but it's our only way out of out of here and we've got to get going before it gets any rougher so let's do it you little yeah. beauty We're off and going. in gear mate all right the adventure continues i suppose we should have um kind of been expecting this type of stuff when the first day we had engine problems, but we just didn't want to cut this adventure short at all. So I think it's all part of it, but we're going to continue on and hopefully find somewhere nice to set up camp tonight. She's um, a bit rougher than anticipated. We're right on the nose of, of where we want to go. Waves are actually coming over the front. <laughs> Have a go behind me, we've come into the protection of this other island and it's just absolute picturesque. So we're gonna throw the anchor because right under us is insane visibility. It's crystal clean. Looks like there's some really nice rocks and reefs. So we're gonna try and get a fish for lunch. All right, mate. See you in there, bro. See you in there. cruised along this reef edge and we've seen there's almost a hundred coconut palms here so this looks like a prime spot to nose the boat on in and set up a bit of a camp for the night. Hans has said that he wants to show us how he sets up a traditional hut when he's camping. Yeah, we'll get a hut and then we'll get some lunch going. Here's the setup, boat's getting anchored out there. We've got a, a reef here, probably going to drop another half a meter so all this rock will come out of the water. It's not a really big tide tonight so the water's probably only going to come up to here during the night and this is where we're going to set uh, the hut up all right she's anchored out safely let's go in and join the boys <laughs> holy moly look at this coral here absolutely perfect it's super special to be here with hans exploring i guess his backyard where we're setting camp up now he said he hasn't come since he was a really young boy and he's camped here a couple of times and he used to paddle a canoe which would almost take a day from his village to get here and they'd swim and catch fish off the beach and then they'd make a hut pretty much what we're about to do now hans just went and disappeared in the back here he's cutting down the frame for our house An unfortunate reality of the world that we live in on pristine remote beaches like this which is always a firm reminder to me that we need to be as conscious as possible about what we're using recycling where possible yeah but this will help us out immensely getting a fire going for lunch Divine. the strong vine yes is this the same vine that you showed us the other day yeah we have, you have to go to the middle split it in the middle yeah 
Has records he's just found a baby coconut crab walking out in the open. Let's go have a look. Oh wow! Wow, it's come out of its shell. <laughs> That's so cool. Oh, and some serious mosquitoes in the jungle there. So this makes the vine less rigid and allows it to be tied and manipulated easier. All right, let's see how he we went. Yeah, look at that now. Perfect. Arms up the top there, chopping down some palm fronds that are just right that are going to be the roof of this shelter. Here she comes. Perfect. Your beauty. This will give us shelter from the storm. All clear. Oh, Hans, you got me. <laughs> There's a machete come flying down. The structure is definitely starting to take shape now. We've got the foundations and then obviously those palm fronds are gonna go on top as a bit of a roof. Geez, we're going five star. We've even got walls around the edge taking shape. And there it is, the completed beach shack, home sweet home for the night with Hans here. Like obviously knowing, you know, what material to use and exactly how he wanted it. Between the three of us, we got this done in under an hour. Yeah, with the three of us though, it's gonna be pretty close quarters. I'm hoping that uh, Hans doesn't have a chainsaw on his schnoz <laughs> at night. <laughs> Who's in the middle? Scissors, paper, rock? Yeah, yeah, mate, not me. But it has been, um, been very cool to, to do this with Hans and learn a hell of a lot from him. Um, obviously, every country around the world have all got their sort of different ways of building huts and stuff, and it's pretty cool to see. We've learned a lot from Hans, and hopefully we can exchange a little bit of knowledge uh, with some of the stuff we know around the place as well. So all that's left to do now is get a fire going, get some rice going, and cook up this beautiful coronation trout. Real hot. Oh man, it's hot. Seriously hot. I think Hans is gonna have to get up one of these coconut trees again. Yeah, there's a few gold that nuts up cool. in this one here. Where is Hans? That is always the question. Oh my God. Oh, there he is. Hunty hunty bro. That is a high tree, and he's just scurried up that like he's walking up the steps to his bedroom. <laughs> Good work, bro. Well done. Hold on. Yeah. She's a she's a rusty machete, mate. She's seen a bit of love this trip. It's been pissing down rain all morning. Everything's wet. This is how to start a fire when all your firewood's wet. Let's do it. More sand, definitely more sand. Yeah, Woof. <laughs> yeah that, 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 go for it, mate. Okay, now the trick is if you haven't seen this before in one of the previous episodes, that will now stay lit for about 30 minutes and then that will allow the firewood to dry out. Hans you like that one? <laughs> Finally, we, can, we, can, teach you <laughs> we can teach you something. <laughs> All we've done with this coronation trout is just taken all the scales off and done a slit either side on those fillets and that's going about a foot a foot above the fire. Well done. Yeah well done, boys. Mother. We'll get some rice going now and that's lunch. We left all our water out on the boat so coconut and salt water is what's cooking the rice. Pull some coals out, mate. Yep. It's happening! <laughs> the trout! <laughs> Hans is sabotaging the trout. Oh, gee, that rice copped a bit too much, love. Hans! Look. It's really good 
The fish is in hell. It got burned on the ground and also on the top. So Double burn. Double burn. Well, this is a new technique we've not seen before. <laughs> I'm just cooking it from both the top and the bottom. This is the uh, the true island oven. It's called the crematorium approach. I'll be honest with you, Hans. You've done some beautiful meals this trip, but I think this one you've cooked the rice, and I hope you haven't cooked, I haven't cooked this coro. <laughs> It's not what you want. Crispy charcoal rice. We're about to test out the waterproofness of the, the shelter. There's a bit of rain around. And lunch shouldn't be too far off. Oh, it's priceless to be able to get out of the sun, a little bit of shade. And if it keeps most of the water off, it's just a bonus yeah. really. <laughs> the pillows are really comfy too. Yeah. <laughs> Got us onto a bit of a trick here. Dip him in salt water and that the water pretty quickly evaporates and you just left with a, a salty lunch. And because it's scaled on these trout or grouper, depending on where you're from, you can no worries eat the skin. Yeah, nice, look at that. I like to eat the skin. Mm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Strick and I were going, come on, Pine, it's just done, mate. It's done, it's been on there for ages. We're we're hungry, come on, get it off. He's like, oh, a little bit longer. We're like, nope, get it off. <laughs> Too impatient. If you eat the tail, you can fly, you can swim. swim. Forever. Yes. You don't have to come back to <laughs> We've eaten every skerrick of meat off that coronation trout. We're just about to go and have a swim after some coconuts for dessert and settle into the afternoon. Yeah, we're going to settle into island time this Arvo, I reckon, mate. It's been a big few days, but good news for you guys is there's plenty more of this series to come. So subscribe to the channel if you're new here. Uh, and we'll see you bright and early for the next one. See you there.